Hey there, and welcome to Grin Technologies' next video tutorial. Today I'm going to talk about our new LIGO battery modules. These are small 36 volt, 2.7 amp hour battery packs that are designed to be just under the 100 watt hour threshold where the shipping and transport of lithium batteries becomes problematic. So each battery has on it a pair of charge and discharge leads, a row of five LEDs, and a button. Um, the basic operation is as follows. If you want to turn the battery on, you press the button until the first LED turns green, release the button, you get a little animation showing it turn on, and then the battery will heartbeat pulse at its current state of charge level. So now the third of five LEDs is pulsating, so you know this battery is somewhere between 50 to 60% charged. To turn off the battery, you do exactly the same thing. Press the button for the first LED to turn red, let go, the battery shows itself turning off, now there's no longer an output voltage on the end of the battery pack. That's your basic turn on, turn off. At any point you can find out the state of charge of the battery just with a very brief button press. So now it shows this at the third LED, so 50 to 60 percent charge, and then it animated to show that the battery is off. When the battery is on, you see that heartbeat pulse indicating that it's at that same charge level. To charge the battery pack, you of course can connect either of these leads to a battery charger, and while it's charging, you'll see an animation. And as the charge progresses, this will reach the third, the fourth, and then the fifth LED when it reaches at 100 percent charge state. Now the battery pack, when it's turned off, has no voltage on the outlet, but it will still allow itself to be charged. Okay? Um, there's one more button action that you can do on the battery pack, and that's put the battery into sleep mode. So I press the button five times fast, you'll see all the LEDs turn red, and then it gradually fades itself out to oblivion. The reason for going in sleep mode is so that the battery can protect itself or enter a state of very, very low self-discharge. So those of you familiar with the electric bike industry will know that the main cause of lithium battery failure isn't customers abusing from overcharging, over-discharging, or excessive current. It's actually people leaving batteries in storage for prolonged lengths of time when the batteries are flat and the onboard BMS circuitry drains a flat battery to the point that it's completely empty and the cells are shot. So lithium batteries are not tolerant to being able to, to being discharged 100%. That's one of the Achilles heels of most lithium batteries is that the circuit there to protect the battery becomes responsible for the depth of the battery in long-term storage. And it was first and <laughs> it was front and center on our minds when we were designing our BMS circuit for the LIGO packs. So when I put the battery into this uh, sleep ship mode, it actually draws just two microamps of current out of the cells. Uh, that's enough that a battery that's, you know, 10% charged would last literally for decades before self-discharging to the point of destruction. Um, if you do have the battery in sleep mode, you can wake it from sleep mode again by pressing the button for the LED to turn green and turn the battery on as I just described. So a single battery pack like this at 98 watt hours isn't all that useful on an electric vehicle. Uh, that would typically get 8 to 10 kilometers or what would you say 6 to 7 miles of range. Uh, so in most setups people are going to stack together multiple LIGO batteries to build up the capacity for what they need. I'll grab a stack of four LIGOs. Uh, so combined in parallel this would give me 36 volts, 11 amp hours, and that's enough for a 35 to 45 kilometer range on a standard bicycle. And it's still small enough that it could fit in the seat or saddle bag of a bicycle and be pretty innocuous uh, for a small portable e-bike. So when you stack the batteries together like this, you need to make a parallel connection joining each battery to the next one. And that's where these modular Anderson connectors are quite versatile. So I'll take a connector from the first battery, plug it into the second battery, Take a connector from the second battery, plug it into the third battery. Take a connector from the third battery and plug it into the oops, uh, I skipped one here. Uh, second to the third, uh, third battery to the fourth. And now I've connected these batteries to be one large brick that's 11 amp hours, and I'm still left with, as in the case of a single LIGO battery pack, two wires coming out of it. Um, so I could continue to build batteries that way, or I can leave this as my final battery pack, use one of these connected to the motor controller, have the other one as a charging port, or I could run my bike lights off one of them, or I could parallel connect both of these if I'm dealing with a setup that has higher current draw so that the current, the parallel current is shared on both output leads. All right, so that's a basic parallel configuration. You can stack up the batteries however you like. Uh, they can fit. Lengthwise end to end, so in this case the batteries from one parallel connection to the next can reach over 
this way, and then I can parallel all these batteries. Um, and this kind of arrangement fits neatly on the seat tube, or sorry, the down tube or top tube of a bicycle. Um, the batteries are also designed with series connection in mind. So when you series connect batteries, you're adding the voltages rather than adding the amp hours. Um, and in this case, we're going to series connect 36 volt batteries to make a 72 volt battery pack. So for that now, I have two of these connected in parallel. Each one is 36 volts, five and a half amp hours. I would take the positive on one of these batteries, connect it to the negative on the other battery. Again, Anderson connectors are very versatile for this kind of application. Um, and then I would separate out the ground from the lower stack of pack and connect that to the positive on the higher set. And now I have myself a 72 volt, five and a half amp hour battery pack. Now, it was important to us that a battery pack that has this flexibility is also super robust, especially since we've potted the battery. So there's really no opportunity for service or repair of the BMS circuit if anything fails. What would happen, there you ask, if I was to take this 72 volt battery and then mistakenly connect it to a 36 volt battery. With most lithium e-bike batteries, this would spell disaster. Um, our BMS circuit was very well designed and ready for smoke and fire. Zip! All you see is a little animation showing that this 36 volt battery had excessive charge current flowing into it. It shut off its uh, charging port. Um, and then let you, the user, notice, notice that. The moment I unplug it, it just returns back to its previous state of being on. So no worries there. Same kind of thing if you were to separate this, accidentally short circuit a battery. So usually if you short circuit a lithium battery, there will be a BMS circuit on board that protects it, but you get a giant spark and arc uh, from the current before the BMS kicks in. And our batteries, Zip, you hear a little beep, and then you see a short circuit animation. Um, that sound you heard, that buzzing, was not a speaker on the battery. That was actually the battery very carefully doing soft discharge pulses uh, before it detected that there was a genuine short circuit on the output. That same behavior will be present if you plug this into a motor controller with a large capacitor. Instead of a huge spark and arc, you get a quiet zzz sound as it charges up that capacitor, and your connectors won't suffer the same arcing damage that you would otherwise have. Okay, so that in a nutshell is the basic operation and usage of the LIGO battery packs. Uh, if you want to put it in ship mode, press the button five times quickly, the LEDs will all turn red and shut off, and at this point you can store it for years with no worry. Uh, it will go into ship mode automatically if it senses itself uh, discharging to a point where it should do that for its own self-preservation. Um, to turn the battery on, you press the button for the first LED to turn green, turn the battery off, press and hold the button for the LED to turn red, it'll shut off. Um, if you hold the button for long enough, it will turn blue. And that is Bluetooth mode. At the moment, this has no function at all. Uh, in the near future, though, we'll be le releasing firmware updates, both to the uh, BMS circuit that's on here, as well as Bluetooth applications for a phone or laptop computer that will let you do all kinds of extra features with the battery to be revealed. And that's it for the basic introduction on our LIGO battery modules. There's a lot more to come in this product line. Uh, we're going to be quite excited to flush out additional details, Bluetooth connectivity, various options for securing it to a battery pack, both in the seat and the down tube. Um, uh, so stay tuned for what Grin has to offer. And if you are an avid traveler with the bike, we're selling these now, a maximum of four per person during the initial pilot release phase. Thanks for watching.